All right, so we're rolling up. We're gonna go talk to Rich. Man, it's a nice neighborhood. Hey, we're here at the house that uh, Rich gave us the address to. We're excited to meet him. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't wait. Like, I love houses. I love exploring stuff. Sanderson, are you ready? I think so. You think so? Hang on, we gotta go back. Sorry. Okay, wait, let's do this again. <laughs> Sanderson, are you ready? Yes. Woo, let's do it. Hey, Hooray. hey, there he is. Rich, hey, Hi. Jack Hadley, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Sergeant yeah. First Class Rich Montanero. Okay, Ooh, Sergeant somewhere. First Class? Yeah! And he works with homes every day. Every when day. he's not, changing lives in the garden. Every day. Ooh, this is Prime Sanderson. She's nice. my religious affairs specialist, and uh, we understand you're going to take us through this house. That we know that there's a couple of uh, maybe discrepancies, things that you're going to point out along the way, but there's a lot of potential too. So that's what's great in your line of work, is you get to see something that maybe didn't start out awesome, but can become awesome. Absolutely, yeah. This is a three bedroom, two bath home, uh, about 1200 square feet, uh, and it's a foreclosure. So I'm gonna take you through it, and I'm gonna kinda show you some things that I look for when we're looking for this. Uh, yeah, with that being said, let's go through the house. Yeah, so uh, sir, what, what sells houses? Like when people come to you and they say, hey, Rich, I really need a new home. I'm looking at something. What, what's the most important feature that they're looking for? Uh, I would have to say that it just depends on the person, to be honest with you. Uh, some people are really into the backyard because they have children or maybe dogs. Uh, most people, I'd have to say, it'd be uh, bedroom and kitchen. Really? But obviously bathroom. Yeah, yeah, I've always heard kitchen, but I was telling Private Sanderson on the way over here, our house was bathrooms. Like, with a teenage daughter, we were trying to find one with two full bathrooms. We kept finding these, like, bath and a half, or, like, bath and a basement, you know, kind of weird yeah. setup, and it's like, no, no, you don't understand, like, this girl needs some time and dad's gotta go to work. You know, it's like, she's gonna need some some hours there. But that's interesting, bedrooms. What, like, so what am I looking for in a bedroom? Because I figure, is it space? I mean, is that the big thing? So believe it or not, I let the people who are looking at the houses answer that question. Because oh, yeah. as you're living, we live every single day, right, where we live, uh, you're gonna find out what works and what doesn't work. So uh, we talked about bedrooms, but you also mentioned kitchens really sell. I've heard that time and time again. Talk to us about this kitchen because I'm seeing some things I really like. Like this countertop's really solid. I've seen some backsplash that's really awesome, but in, in where you're at and where your expertise comes in, you're seeing some things that maybe make you a little bit nervous too. Absolutely. So the first thing that attracts people to the kitchen is always the appliances. Uh, I don't know how many times uh, you, there's no, I, as you can see, the appliances. <laughs> uh, not <laughs> even, everything but the kitchen sink. Yeah, the kitchen oh, sink's even gone. <laughs> there's so many times though that we're going through uh, a kitchen and I can see so many problems or things that aren't going to work functionality wise, but no, they can't get past how glorious um, and beautiful stainless steel So it's shiny, the door is shiny, it's great. I can even watch TV, I can put in my notes on the, on the refrigerator, but the door doesn't open the right way. Absolutely. And you see that, but and they don't, or it hits the top. So you can't even get into that beautiful Absolutely. fridge. The other thing I always try to make mention of is um, where your placement of your sink is. Uh, as you can see, this thing looks like it's not even really fully centered onto yeah. the window. Um, and what does your view look like when you're looking out? The other thing is when we're nice talking fence. about Sorry. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> when we're talking about functionality is, is where's the dishwasher at? I've oh, seen yeah. dishwashers on the island and the sink here, and I've seen it vice versa, where the sink's on the island and the dishwasher's behind you. Well, now you've got to walk all that space for it. Right. So those are things that I like to point out when we're looking at the kitchen versus just what the appliances look at, look like, and then what the finishes are. So you're thinking more layout and functionality and maybe a buyer, and so that's part of the beauty of your job is you get to help kind of coach them into to helping them. And the buyer's thinking, oh, this is so lovely. I love the so, colors, I love the stone, but they're not really thinking in that mindset. So that's important when we go into a space. Think about living in every day. I love how you mentioned, you know, if I'm gonna, you know, fill up a, you know, a pot here, and I'm gonna take it to the stove way over here, and then I'm gonna put it in the dishwasher over here, You've already walked six miles before you even got to dinner. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you know, you talked about functionality. I'm going to go back to that. Uh, one of the questions I like to ask people, your purpose, is, I mean, do you cook, sir? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you spend a lot of time in the kitchen? So we do. We spend a lot of our family time in the kitchen, even when we're not cooking. It's just kind of our hangout area for okay. us. It's a big deal. So you can see, you can see yourself in a kitchen oh, like absolutely. this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Where someone who burns macaroni and cheese, right. do they really need a pot filler for right. their macaroni and cheese? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Extra feature I may not need, so I can put my my pizza, my 
frozen pizza here and do what? Absolutely. Yeah. The other question is I there ask a way people, to convert that to like a soda? There is. Coffee? Absolutely. You, can make, you know, I saw someone. Don't tell Natalie this. we said that because she's a fitness trainer and she'd be upset. <laughs> I saw someone make this into a, a coffee uh, maker once where you can actually like program it and it has like a little a little pad that goes with it. Uh, the other question I ask people is do you, do you eat in your kitchen? Um, as you can see, this island here is obviously going to be a center point where people are going to gather around. Mm -hmm. Is this an important feature or right. do you see yourself in a formal dining area? Yeah, I, so for us, we really spend, so we do spend time in the kitchen, but you're right. We end up over in the dining room quite a bit, especially when we have visitors. Because yes. it's just, it's a weird space to have company. So yeah, yeah our, a formal dining room is really important to us. And that's a great excuse to start transitioning yes. this way to the dining area. <laughs> so sir, another problem that we always run into when we're looking at houses is like a house like this that's vacant. Uh, people don't know what to do with the space. It's hard for people to visualize yeah. how they can see things. In my opinion, this could be converted easily into a living room or it could possibly be formal dining here. This brings me to a really good point. So when we're looking at a house like this, uh, most houses that we see that are on the market are actually sold by a seller, someone who's lived in the house. They're required by law that they have to disclose adverse um, things about the house and, and information so that way they can the next person who's buying it obviously you know knows what the, what they're getting into. In this instance, because this is a foreclosure, we don't know a lot of the histories on the house. There's things that we can pull and we can kind of do some research with. But for instance, I don't know if this is a three seasons porch. I don't know what it's like in the winter time. I don't know what it's like in the fall time. I don't even know if it's if, if it's winter or, or uh, sorry, I don't know if it's weatherproof. Uh, this is where within the first 10 days when we put in an offer on a house is called the inspection period. This is when we were hire a home inspector to come through and actually go through the house and give us more information upon it. And you would um, recommend that for any purchase, any time, any I single mean, purchase, regardless of history, non-history. I don't even care. I don't even care if you know the person that you're buying the house from. I would always get a home inspection. Um, I tell people that the purpose of the home inspection isn't necessarily to find something wrong with the house, just to tell you more information about it, like a mechanic going through a car. Sure, sure. And, and is there are there certain types of inspections, or is it all? Is there? I mean, I know there's a general one. Are there certain types? that you would look for for certain types of houses or is it kind of a one one shot kind of deal? So believe it or not, there there are several inspections that can stem from our first initial home inspection, which is generally just a, a general home inspection of the property. Um, as you can see, this property here has a koi pond. Uh, a general home inspector might not know a lot about the koi pond, but because maybe he can draw some attention to it or make us aware of some issues that might arise from this pond, we can actually hire somebody who specializes in pond and come out and look at it. Right, whereas somebody like me who's buying a home, I hear koi pond, I get all excited because I'm picturing myself hanging out and it's tranquil, but the reality is there may be something with the koi pond we don't know about that could end up costing lots of money, could be you know seeping, could have some type of uh, issue that that's what that person that's an expert in there would be able to tell us. Absolutely. And even though I know a little bit more about koi ponds than maybe the average buyer might, I'm not a koi pond expert and that's why we would hire that person. That's, and that's why we've got him, Rich, he was an expert on homes and everything. You told us about uh, the kitchen cells, you also said bedrooms, can we go look at some? Yeah, let's go look at the bedrooms. So we're, we're going to check out some, some bedrooms, this is a three bedroom, right? Um, what are we looking for in the bedroom as we maybe pop into one of these? So I like to look at the layout of how the bedroom sits. So as you can see here, most of the bedrooms, they're, oh, sorry. I like to look at the layouts of, uh, I like to look at the lay. <laughs> <laughs> I like to just lay out in the beach, yeah. but I, I have to do this video, so <laughs> let's do that. I, I like to look at the layouts of the bedroom, uh, how the way they sit in the house. Obviously, you're not going to be living here alone. I'm assuming you've got a wife and kids. Right, yep. Yeah, so where your bedroom is going to be coincided from the loudest child is what I always tell people. Right. Uh, the other thing I also look at is where's the bathroom? In oh yeah. Comparison to this. Yeah, especially as we get older, that's become more important to me. Like, where am I going to go at 3 a.m. if I have to get up and go to the bathroom? How far? And what am I going to run into? Right. And as you're here trying to sleep in, and you've got teenage daughters running, yeah, and opening yes. and closing Amen. the doors, yeah. that could be an issue. Yeah. So as we as we think about the the bathroom, what are we looking at for a bathroom? As so bedrooms really kind of placement size, but what are we looking for in a bathroom? Sir, I know this is going to come off really weird, but you need to sit on the toilet. That's Let's what I always tell people when we're buying a house, is you need to see yourself. 
Can you see yourself sitting on this toilet? I mean, I, I think I need a magazine, but I think other than that, I think I can see. But I know what you're saying. So I think you're saying, am I going to bump into the door? Am I going to run into this? What's my what's my view from yeah. here? And that's the, what I'm looking for. The toilet that you're sitting at is the easiest thing to replace in this bathroom. What I can't replace is the walls and how the bathroom's laid out. So again, functionality, functionality, walk through, and it's okay. Like you're not offended if somebody comes and sits down and thinks about it. I mean, you encourage that. So. Absolutely. You close yeah. the door. How does it, how does yeah. the door close and compare? Yeah. I'm gonna need a couple minutes. <laughs> Uh, so another thing I always tell people is to step in the shower and see how tall the shower is. Uh, they sell extenders that will extend your shower head a little taller. Uh, the thing that I tell people though is that as you can see in this bathroom, it's, it's been tiled. I'm not sure if this drywall back here is the cement board, uh, but there is a threshold of steam when you're showering. And if you raise your shower head up higher, uh, it raises that steam level. And if, if this wasn't done correctly, that could damage the drywall back there. So those are things that you want to consider on things that you can't, can you change it? Can you not change the configuration of that? So, so sir, this is the part in the tour that is either the main or break part. You love the kitchen, you love the dining room setup, you're okay with the bathroom. Set well. Absolutely. Everything came out right. Absolutely. It's when we get to the bedrooms that people are like, hey, how can I see myself sleeping here? Uh, I hear I hear several different things that people say. Whether like, well, the bedroom is an important thing to us. It's my space. I hear people say we only go in the bedroom when it's time to sleep, so we don't care about the size of the bedroom. Uh, the thing that always that everyone can agree on is your storage space in your bedroom. Mm -hmm. You need a closet. Two people live in the bedroom. Right, wife, yeah. right. My wife and I. Yeah, absolutely. You only got one closet. Whew. That's tight. I mean, that barely fits all my multiple clothes, and I'm. I mean, I'm a pretty classy guy. I don't have any great shirts like Rich does, but if I had them, I wouldn't be able to fit them in there because it's not real big. So this is the thing that I tell people. Unfortunately, because of the way the times are, when this house was built, having only one uh, closet in the bedroom, uh, that was normal. Now we're used to seeing two large walk-in closets, which is gonna be a little bit difficult with the space that we have here. So that might be a deal breaker there. Yeah. So, but there's probably ways you can get more space if you're creative too, if it's something that's probably not totally over, but definitely something to consider. And again, functionality, functionality, functionality. Absolutely. See yourself in the space and see your stuff in the space, right? If you've got a king size bed, you're going to be like bumping into the wall as soon as you roll out. Like that's because that's, that's about all you can get in here. Absolutely. Another important feature, obviously, there's different levels to the house. We love lower levels because we can finish that space to compensate for things that maybe we didn't necessarily have in the upper area of the house. Uh, unfortunately, we live in Iowa and there's high radon levels. Uh, one, of, one of the things that I tell people as we're looking at houses is that if you think that you're going to spend anywhere from 50 to 70% of your time in the next five years in a lower level, I would seriously consider having the area tested for radon. Uh, there are ways that we can mitigate the radon. Um, we've come leaps and bounds on how we can mitigate that and it's become a lot more affordable. So that's something to consider when we're looking at the, at the lower level. The other thing that we also want to consider is that uh, if you take water and, and, and you pour it on a countertop, it's always going to find the path of least resistance. It's the same thing with the house. Uh, we always look at the, the gutter systems that a house has and make sure that as the roof is peeking out that the water is actually being pushed away from the house. That's what gutters are used for. Uh, when we don't see the gutters on the house, obviously the water is going to find its way down to the foundation. So with that being said, why don't we go downstairs? Sometimes a lower level in a house is what we like to call the wild card. Just because a lot of aspects of a, of a basement uh, don't photograph well. So we might not see a lot of, 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 of the basement in right. listing photos. Uh, one of the major parts of a house that we look at, and I'm telling you, we always look at it, especially in foreclosures, it's usually the first place I go, is where the mechanicals are stored at. And mechanicals, meaning your HVAC uh, furnace and your water heater. As you can see, the lower level here is a little bit chopped up. Um, it's not a traditional lower level like we'd see. Right off the stairs here, there's a walk-in shower, um, a toilet closet, and I believe an area for laundry. I don't think that's that weird. You know, come downstairs, take a shower, and just go <laughs> out in the middle of nowhere. I love it. So this is our mechanicals room. Uh, as you can see, the water heater here and the, uh, the, the furnace, they don't look very old. Uh, once again, our home inspector, he'll, he'll dive more deep. He'll dive deeper into this. He'll look, tell you what the manufacturer date is. He'll actually even look up uh, your furnace and, and, and tell you any kind of recalls or any kind of issues that might arise from it. 
the pipes coming up from this furnace here um, make this furnace a high efficiency furnace. Okay. Um, it's getting a lot of its air from the outside and exhausting it back and forth versus how we used to do it uh, right. back when we were growing Circulate. up. Yeah, is where we sucked it in from the house and we circulated mm -hmm. that same air all the way around. Yeah, and it is important because this is thousands and thousands of dollars. I mean, this will make or break a purchase, right? I mean, if you don't get these mechanicals right, it's it's central to not only having heat in the winter and cool in the summer, but also just the cost to replace these is, is pretty high. So behind you, we see a little bit of like just kind of stuff running down the, the wall here. In the corner here, there's a little bit of blackness. Uh, to me, I guess from the outside and not being the expert, this maybe concerns me. What are your thoughts on kind of some of the things we're seeing? The one thing that I tell people about black mold is not all black mold is toxic, but I will tell you this, every single person has a different way of how they react to black mold. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest thing. Two people could be standing here, and for instance, I have high al allergies towards black mold. Maybe you don't have any allergies to black mold. Uh, at either rate, we would still get it tested. We would still get a company in here and to try to mitigate that. So. Oh, so that's definitely something you can you can test for, and you want to make sure there's no black mold in our house. Absolutely. Or if there is, we need to take care of it. Because it's not a disqualifier. It's, it's maybe common in some areas, but it's definitely something you want to get taken care of. Yeah. Uh, obviously, there's things that we need to do to our home to keep our home safe. One of the things is, is cleaning out your gutters. No one's lived here, I'm gonna guess, for probably about a year to two years. No one's cleaned the gutters. Therefore, the water is just trying to find every single way that it can find its way in. Uh, I don't know that for a fact, and that's why we get the home inspected. That's yeah. something that maybe our home inspector could probably call more attention to. That's a great point, though, on home maintenance, because I think you hit on something really simple. It'd take you, what, maybe 20, 30 minutes to clean your gutters. This would take you hours and hours to clean up. So a little bit of prevention is gonna help that. Same with the furnace. And once you do make that purchase, just changing the air filters, uh, doing the simple things, is gonna help down the line. Absolutely, and things that we don't look for and things that we obviously miss is on the outside exterior of your house, there's gonna be low spots around your foundation. We like to tell people just to take some dirt and make sure that the dirt is sloping away from the house. It doesn't have to be a big uh, slope, it can be gradual. Um, but you just want to make sure that as you're going around your entire perimeter of your foundation that the dirt is sloping away from it and that there's no low spots. Otherwise, water is going to find its way there. Continue to puddle and pool, freeze, cracks become into bigger cracks, and then we have this problem. Path of least resistance. Yep. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, so I, I, think, uh, I think what I hear you saying, the most important thing is to, to not just take care of a problem, but take care of it correctly. Because this could be something that if, if you try to do a cheap fix, if you were to paint over this or just throw some, throw a bucket of water on it to try and you know, scrub it off, uh, that's the wrong answer. Right, if this is an interior and exterior problem, we can't just paint over this, we can't just fill in the cracks, uh, we can't even try to seal it from the inside. We wanna make sure that we, we're, we're both taking care of the problem inside and mitigating the water on the outside. So this is both an inside and outside problem. Awesome. So sir, another thing that we run into when it comes to a lower level is your sump pit. Your sump pit, is essentially where water is flowing into and we're actually pumping it back to the outside. It's usually your lowest part of your house. Not every single house has a sump pit. Uh, a lot of times when we're going through the house, one of the things that you can find on the seller disclosure is whether this is a wet basement or not. If they've ever had water in the basement, it's something that they should disclose. At any rate, I would always suggest somebody to inspect the sump pit or install a sump pit if there's not one present. Yeah, so get the water out that's coming in and give it a place to go. So you talked about path of least resistance. You're just creating a path, essentially, correct? Exactly, exactly. Uh, we live in Iowa, so every single house is different. You might have a dry basement. Your neighbor might have a wet basement. At any rate, things change. We have high rainfalls. We have days and days of rainfall. Uh, a dry basement can become a wet basement overnight. Yeah. So if you don't I, like the weather in Iowa, just wait five minutes, it'll change. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, another thing when it comes to the sump pit, it's not, like I said, it's not a required item, um, but it's what kind of a sump do you have and whether or not your sump has a battery backup. Mm. There's a couple of different ways that you can back up your sump. There's a hydro way and then there is a, a battery backup. Battery backup, exactly what the implication state. We put a battery, we hook it up. If the power goes out, the sump continues to work. With the hydro, it actually opens up a water flow that actually powers your sump pump. Huh. And so water is pumped through the sump pump to get it to open up and it's actually pumping water out. So you it's, use it's water right. to get out water. It's exactly. Kind of, yeah, I feel like I'm in an inception, like <laughs> inside of inside of the inside of a dream. And I think, it, it, what a dream come true to meet Rich. I mean, this is, talk about uh, the best dream we've had. This is awesome. Like, yeah. hopefully somebody out there is getting their dream home as we talk about all that stuff. 
Sir, so one of the things that I also tell people, the first time home buyers, home buyers in general, um, on their checklist is obviously getting a pre-approval letter uh, from a lender of their choice. Uh, obviously being veterans and being in the service, we get to utilize the VA loan. Um, any lender can do the, a VA loan. That's just one of the many vehicles that we use to fund a home. Uh, the VA loan just simply means that the government is giving us some backing on buying a loan and uh, we're able to buy a home zero down. So another aspect that we want to look at when we're looking at houses is obviously where the house is located at in conjunction with location, 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 location. Exactly. Right. What's important to you? Jobs, school, um, and obviously, you know, other activities and things that your children might do or you might do. Uh, the where it sits at, the location, um, and meet the neighbors. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being outside, everybody's outside. Uh, there's nothing wrong with stopping and talking to the neighbors and asking how the neighborhood is. Um, and a little bit more background they might know about the house. Right, the neighbors know everything. Yeah, you never know about that one barking dog or the crazy neighbor that nobody wants to hang out with. You know, like that's good info, that's really good advice. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's, it's really been a pleasure. We really appreciate your time. Good luck with this amazing property and uh, thanks for just giving us so many tips. I, I'm excited. I don't know, Pratt, Pratt Sanderson, like what did you think? Like, I like this house. She loves, she loves. I do like you this You might house. have a buyer after all, we'll have to chat later. But <laughs> hey, we're gonna catch it. We're gonna go catch Natalie. We're hoping to go work out. Um, you wanna join us? Yeah, uh, looks I, like you got a lot of work. I've, I've got things to do today. So. All right, well, you're looking pretty fit anyway. But, yeah. <laughs> Hey, so Prep Sanderson, that was pretty awesome. Like, I learned a ton about home buying. You probably did. Oh, for sure. Are you picturing that wraparound porch and yes. that nice country weather? The koi pond might take it. The might koi pond, like, yeah, that was a really awesome find. But that's what's cool about exploring houses and, and why I would encourage people to not settle on the first property they see is because I think there's hidden gems in every single thing. And Rich did a great job of pulling that out. So I'm excited. Uh, we're on to the next adventure. Let's do it.